Hey there viewers, Eric O here from Self Main Auto. Welcome back to our channel. If you're brand new here, welcome to our channel. I've got a new video for us and we're not at the shop today. As a matter of fact, I'm at home and I'm out in my barn. My chainsaw's broke. But it's nobody's fault but my own because I completely neglect anything I own that runs on gasoline. And uh, the ethanol is really taking its toll on this thing. Frankly, because I don't uh, store it properly or, you know, maintain it properly. So, for about the past year or so, it's been running quite poorly and getting worse and worse. And, well, now we're at the point it doesn't run. <laughs> well, hardly at all, rather. So, I decided I was going to go online, grab a, some carburetor gaskets, get this thing tore apart, and kind of fix back up and get it back in use. And I discovered that you can buy a carburetor for the same price that you can buy a couple gaskets for. So, I'll post a link where I got this carburetor from. It's a Wing Wang, just Chinese carburetor. I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to find out together. So it's a steel MS210. That's what kind of saw it is, just in case you're wondering. It's a pretty small saw, like a, I don't know, 18 inch or something, I guess. Uh, but this is a little package that showed up in the mail directly from Hong Kong. We'll see what all it came with and we'll see if it works. If it doesn't work, I'm only out a couple bucks and this thing was, it was ridiculously cheap. One of those things that seemed too good to be true. So, it probably is. We don't even know yet. So, we'll see what we got. Looks like, uh, must be a gas filter, maybe a oil filter for the uh, oil pump side. Gas filter, a little tube. Uh, Yuzhu Zhuang Yang Power Spark Plug. And it's made with German technology. Part Chinese, part Volkswagen. There's that little hot rod. A little L7T. It says WX on it. Sweet. You know it's quality when it comes in a box like that. We got a new air filter. Yeah, should keep the big chunks out anyways. And then, we got this little guy. Carburetor gasket. Made by Spare Part. And we got the carburetor here. There's our throttle. Yeah, one's a throttle, one's a choke. Yeah, this is the throttle because it's got the idle set screw on it. That's our choke. Got our high low mixtures, our idle screw, fuel inlet. So there it is. You can buy a gasket for 10 cents or you can buy the whole carburetor for a nickel. Let me go get some tools because I don't hardly have any here, but I got my little emergency kit in the truck. That should be enough to tear this thing apart, I assume. Now, you're going to have to kind of pardon me as I fumble through this. I'm not a chainsaw technician, if that's what they call themselves, I guess. But we're going to do the best we can with what we've got to work with. See what we run across. So there's our original air filter usually just blow these out this one's like a like a fiber mesh and the uh, this one here is just more like a screen a really really fine screen I can say whereas the factory one appears to be like a you know some sort of mesh you can just blow them out you just blow them out with a blow nozzle is what you usually do all right so it looks like we're gonna need probably an eight millimeter I guess. I don't know. Let's uh, take some nuts off this thing and see if it just falls apart. So it looks like there's a couple nuts here on the end of the uh, carburetor. It holds this air filter on. It probably holds the whole mess on, I would assume. Let's see, I'm just 
Let's see what they say. Well, it's got these uh, extensions on the high-low mixture screws and stuff. We'll have to take those off. We've got some throttle linkage there. Let's we'll get that off. That looks all looks pretty easy, actually. So the throttle linkage seems to me just kind of give it some gas here. Looks like it should probably pop up out of that, I'm thinking. Yep. I don't know if it stays. Yeah, it looks like it's probably looped into the, oh no, pops out of the carburetor, I guess. Hooks back in there one way or another. We'll figure that out when we put it back together. And then, we've got the choke linkage. Which looks like maybe this whole rod comes, comes out or something. You guys are probably, uh, probably somebody's watching us that's a chainsaw guy. <laughs> I'm sorry if you are. Um, well, definitely not doing that right. Okay. That's wrong. Epic. Let's see. We gotta kind of get that back in. I've got this all messed up. Oh, lovely. Well, we'll just pry it for right now. There we go. How's that? That worked. So, just a choke package. You guys pay attention. I might not know how this thing goes back together. We'll figure it out though, guaranteed. Okay, set that stuff to the side. Now what do we got? Got this whole rubber donger here. That come out with the carburetor, oh look at that. Take that off. Must be some kind of a vent it appears. Where's that go? Boy, we're almost done. So there's our carburetor. Gas line's still hooked to it. Yank that off. Whoa! Forgot to pull the fuel pump relay before we started. Jeez. Okay. Oh man, that gas smells rancid. This is a Zama. Zama carburetor. Made in China. Well, we'll set the old Zama over there. Just in case we need to fix it still. And, uh, yeah, well, that's how you get the carb off. Pretty simple. Yeah, it's not my typical repair videos. Going in this baby blind. I can see where the gas hose goes down into the uh, fuel tank. And, it, well, quite frankly, it looks like we'd have to disassemble quite a bit more. You know, like this whole orange housing, take the handles and stuff off. But... To be quite honest with you, I'm not having any fuel delivery issues, I don't believe. I mean, we can, uh, <laughs> we'll do the quick and dirty test on this thing. We'll wipe it off so it's sanitary. Yeah, you can blow through it fine. I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to tear the rest of the saw apart. This is the hose that goes to the fuel tank. So this is our uh, EVAP system. Uh, minus the vent solenoid charcoal canister. This is an old school vent. So that's all the hydrocarbons out. Just into the atmosphere like the good old days. So I think what we ought to do now is uh, we'll dig, uh, dig that gasket off that's in there. I don't know if you can see it, but the uh, carburetor gasket. First I'll verify the one that it came with. Looks like the right one. And if it is, we'll See if I can't reach in there with a pick or something, peel that off. Spray this out with some our favorite brake parts cleaner, which I have everywhere. And uh, get the new Wing Wang carburetor on there and see if this baby runs. But I sure hope it works. It'll be a super cheap fix if it does. I know one thing's for sure. I gotta go dump the gas out of this thing. It smells like tarnish. Alright, there's our old gasket. I'll get some uh, spray cleaner and see if we can't plug that hole and douche this thing off a little. The uh, handle on the pick seems to cover that hole quite well. I'm just going to hold it over there. Man, I love this. I even got this stuff at home. Can you guys believe that? You probably can. 
I don't think I've made a single video yet without brake parts cleaner. Look at that. It appears. This little metal plate that our carb gasket sat on. Just a kind of uh, adapter plate there or something. And there's actually like a rubber port or rubber gasket behind that. We'll just leave that in place. I guess we didn't get a new one. That's the one that goes uh, directly into the cylinder. Being a two-stroke, we can actually just look in and see the piston because there is no valves. All right, well, let me get the new gasket and slide this baby together. Well, that didn't work. Well, so here's the old gasket and there's the new gasket. Similar, but not the same. But I don't think it matters. I've got all four holes where we need them. They line up on that metal plate, so we're just gonna run with that. Stick the old metal plate back on, and frankly, behind that metal plate, there's only one hole that needs to line up anyhow, so. Flashlight, we got some pretty primitive tools here at the house. Ah, now I just dropped into dirt. It's just like working at home. Wipe the dirt and the sawdust off it. Just like new again. I could go to the shop and fix this. But where's the fun in that? Why they made them holes a little tight. I'll tell you what, instead of working that down, I'll just take the, uh, I'll just take the new carburetor here, push it in with that, that way I don't take a chance of tearing it. Might be the smartest thing to do. Okay, gasket is fully installed using the gasket installation tool. Get this thing out of our way, this thing, this thing comes off right Okay, guess it's just a matter of working backwards now, we'll reinstall our carb, hook our gas line up to it, seems to fit quite well, we'll wipe off that, it's our EVAP purge line, our EVAP vent line, I guess we'll call it. Then, see how this little rigmarole goes over here. You know what? We never do we compare this. Let's see what we got. Okay, so this is slightly different in appearance. Our high low mixture screws are further spread apart on the OEM carburetor. And that is uh, what these line up with. That typically would go on there like that, and then you'd reach through those rubber holes to adjust the carburetor. In a fashion similar to this here. So it would sit over that carb like that. Now we're faced with a little, a little bit of a dilemma. simply because this one is different. So let's get it slined up on here. Let's leave this out of the way temporarily. Slide that on. We'll slide our rubber piece back in. That's gonna inhibit us from getting to our low speed mixture screw. 
I think it's time to modify. Well, that's kind of a, it's kind of a disappointment, really. Had a lot of good reviews on this carburetor on the internet. Come to find out, we'd have to modify this slightly in order to make it work. And that's what holds our vent. So we can't go chopping it up too much. Okay, let me think what to do here. So I think this is the simplest solution. Just leave it alone. So here's what we're dealing with. Typically, you would adjust your uh, carburetor through this opening here, and then through this opening here, your low speed adjustment would be here through the handle, you'd reach all the way in on the factory carb, and you'd get to the carb adjusting screws. But, when they made this one, like I say, they did change it slightly. Let me get this rubber back out of the way. So now both our high and low speed screws are right next to each other, instead of spread apart. With our idle mixer, our idle screw down on the bottom. So what I'm going to do, I was thinking about modifying it, but I'm hesitant to, simply because if I've got to repair the old carburetor, it's because this, this one doesn't work or whatever reason. I don't want to have to, uh, you know, buy this piece, you know, because of negligence. Or just do the fact that I cut it. <laughs> But you can easily enough reach through and get to the high speed side of the carb. Then you just tip it a little bit, we can get to the low speed side. So we're just going to go through the one hole, hit both screws, call it a day. So we've got the throttle linkage. Kind of now that we've got the problem there resolved with that little adjuster rubber cover, whatever it is, we're going to fish that linkage back on. Oops. Because that might be easier to do, try to get this linkage business figured out while the, uh, oh, what do I want to say, while the carburetor's laying here loose. Let's kind of snap that back in there. Ooh, baby. And then we've got this whole little Mickey Mouse thing here. There's a little hook up there for the vent hose. There's probably some steel guy out there just laughing right now. That's okay. I've got broad shoulders. So if you remember, taking this thing apart didn't go so well. I think what we ought to do is try to get this plastic piece back in here, which evidently houses the portion of the kill switch. All right, we'll snap that back in. So that's how that's supposed to be. We'll have a look at this linkage here. That went in there like so. Okay. So that goes in the side of the carburetor. However, unless you have Superman type powers, you can't make metal bend. Well, I mean, we can, it's just not going to work the same. I wonder. I wonder what the actual procedure is on this. I'm certain it's probably not the one I'm using. And frankly, that's just gotta go in there, I tell you what. What you guys are really gonna be liking this video. We'll take that throttle linkage back off. Let's pop this little thing back out of there. Oops. It's like working on a car harder. Let's see if we can't put this in here. Hook that up to there. We're going to put it together the same way we took it apart. Just a little minor tweaking to get the uh, shaft lined up over there. That's lined up. Flip up our metal kill switch here. There's probably like a way smoother way to do this, but this is what this is the method we're using. Resilient. We haven't even broke anything yet. It's a pretty uh, primitive type kill.
kill switch they have, but seems to work. Oops. We'll get our throttle hooked back up. Get that baby in there. Hey, we're good to go. There wasn't any gasket on our air filter, right? No. Unless we lost it, but I didn't see it. factory one seems to fit that okay seems to be hitting my vent over there I think we're okay now we'll put this on and get this baby torqued to factory specifications which is not too tight and not too loose. All right, looks good. Let me make sure I can reach them screws. And I can pretty easily. Okay, perfect. Now it's time to change the spark plug. come out easier than that Ford we just did, huh? There, this has got a little NGK plug in it. Throw that in the trash because we've got a Yu Ju Zing Hong Yang quality. Gap looks good. I don't even know what it's supposed to be, but it looks good. Probably good enough for what we're going to do. It's all tight. We'll put the uh, little plastic cover back on. This goes one of two ways. And I believe if you put it in the downward position, it pulls the hot air from the engine, sucks it into the carburetor for wintertime use. Well, it's pretty warm out, so we'll put it like that. So it's kind of like cold air induction now. Performance. Put this on, we'll go uh, dump the gas out of that and uh, see if we can't get it running. We'll cut something. Got some semi fresh two stroke mixed up here, so we'll fill her up. See if it's got any bar oil in it. That yeah, looks pretty well empty too. But before we go fill that up, I want to make sure the thing runs. Let's take it outside and give it some tugs. <laughs> Baby popped on the first whack. sure what to say. I didn't really expect the old Wang Dong carburetor to work so well right out of the gate. We didn't have to do anything other than put it on. I mean this thing wasn't uh, 
I can't see any sense in even touching a single screw on it. Yeah, we'll go out and, uh, like I say, there is a tree that fell down across my lower driveway. So we'll go, uh, we'll go chop it up. Put some bar oil in it first, I guess. See how it runs under a load. You know, that could, uh, that could be a game changer. You know, if it, you know, runs crap in our load, but, or, you know, starts running crappy when it warms up. We'll find out. It's not a very big tree, I don't think. So, like I said, I can't really see the need to uh, make any adjustments currently. And like I say, you know, I couldn't see the need to add any, you know, change out the fuel filter and all that stuff. Because we're not really dealing with any kind of starvation issues or anything. But yeah, so far so good. The uh, We'll see how the Yu Jin Gong spark plug works, holds up for us in this carburetor kit here, or carburetor. That's the number on the box. I don't know if it means anything. Like I said, I just bought it off Amazon. I don't know. It's pretty crazy though to think that we can get this stuff so cheap. You know, I think this whole shebang, it was like less than 30 bucks, I think, shipped from right from China. I mean, this package came literally from Ningga Bodo Bejidang, Providence, China. 315-0033. I don't know. It's pretty amazing. So I couldn't see, I couldn't justify just the, you know, the gasket kit alone from steel was a considerable amount more money. And who knows, you know, long term, you know, this may be a poor option. But short term, it seems okay so far. So let's go try it out under load and then we'll make a full assessment as to whether or not it was a good purchase. And, you know, obviously we're not going to know until, you know, two years from now or three years from now if it's still functioning. But this one only went bad for pure negligence. You know, that's, that's totally my fault here. I, I own that one. I don't take care of my stuff near as well as I should when it comes to, you know, small engines and lawnmowers and crap. Hardly have enough time to keep my vehicles going. Shop and everything. And frankly, a lot of this stuff just gets put on the back burner. I'd probably save that. Okay. Enough talk. Let's go cut something. So this here is the bottom half of my back driveway. And there's our problem. That's the whole reason I was forced to fix the chainsaw. Been using the other driveway currently, but I kind of like this way coming in and out. So let's see how it works.
All right, viewers, that is that. The Steel MS-210. Cheap carburetor I got on the internet. Seems to work pretty well. I don't know how it's going to go long term, but uh, I'll keep you posted. I can't see any sense in adjusting anything on it. It came pretty well set, so if it ain't broke, you know, don't fix it. Uh, it doesn't appear to be running too rich or too lean. Had good power, you know, cutting through this wood. Um, this wood is pretty soft. It's pretty, you know, pretty saturated. Obviously, the tree is was dead, and uh, you know that's why it fell over. But the wood is still pretty wet. But even when the chainsaw was laboring, it seemed to seem to work good. I didn't have any flat spots in it. I didn't even touch the idle screw. The thing actually idles good. Uh, so that's pretty impressive. Maybe I just got lucky with the one I've got. Uh, but I do remember before I purchased it because it was so ridiculously cheap. You know how it came with the uh, you know the spark plug and everything for like peanuts. I was pretty skeptical, but it had a ton of good reviews. So it's like, what the heck? I'll try it. You know, you're not out that much. And, you know, not saying that money is valueless, but it was pretty inexpensive. So I gave it a shot. I rolled the dice. It worked. Made some firewood. And uh, we'll use that. We'll burn that up in the campfire. Most importantly, I got the uh, lower half of my driveway opened back up again. So that's good. We don't have to keep going going around about the other way. Um, yeah. So thanks for watching. I know it wasn't a car repair video, but... It was a repair video of some sort, so I hope you enjoy it. Give it a thumbs up if you did and a thumbs down if you didn't. Check us out on Facebook. You can connect with me socially on Google Plus, too, if you're on that. So just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.